the Revance Beal 2016. Now, this is an interesting video. I'm going to make it about one man here, and it's Petr Bakoc. And there he is in the Czech National Champions jersey. And I just want to watch, want you to watch him all day. A lot of other guys here, like Gasparotto, Kokar, Matthews, and Alaphilippe. Um, Alaphilippe's on the left-hand side, uh, about seven wheels back for the quick step. Um, gen basically, there's... For not, this this course is very similar to Amstel Gold. It's sort of in between what you'd say Amstel Gold is and what the um, Flemish Classics are. Uh, it's got two climbs, so there's one in about 200 meters, um, which is the Iskel, and then you've got the um, the Scave, which is with like the base of the last 700 meters. And it suits people like you know Van der Poel, uh, Wellens, Matthews, people like that. So anyway, here, here's the right hand corner. Um, it's cobbled with some of this, so you can see we've got Wellens second wheel, then. Um, Galapan on the wheel, but watch Bakoc there, just riding in the middle on the cobbles, like, no worries, son, no worries, um, and he's loving, he's loving life. So this is the Iskelan, um, which is, you know, it's not steep, but it's enough to do the damage anywhere. Wellens has already been up the road, so he decides it's time to launch it. So he absolutely launches it so hard. Look at Alaphilippe moving up on the right-hand side with Bakoc in his wheel, which is a good, good position from them. So Wellens, obviously, people think maybe he's got something in it, so they all follow him. Obviously, then just blows up, because that was a huge surge. And then this Bora Argon 18 lad decides that it's time to go as well. Um, but I think people, you know, it's all in one line now. Everyone's just realised that it's just hold the wheel and hope for the best because, you know, this is a hard race and, you know, you finish it. There's a lot of corners, a lot of corners in this race, and that's very, very important. So I believe this is David Tanner for I Am Cycling um, who decides to go on the attack. And everyone on the left-hand side, like Gasparotto's third wheel, obviously one I'm still got before. He's won it twice. It won it in 2017 ahead of... Um, Jasper Hansen, I think it was, um, but I'm not, I'm pretty sure it was him, um, and, you know, he's a solid lad, people aren't, you know, messing around too much, Alaphilippe decides that it's time to close it after Galapan goes across, um, and obviously Bakoc is on the wheel, and Bakoc knows that basically he's just got to fight Alaphilippe, because he was the designated leader, Alaphilippe had done a bit of work before, uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, Bakoc was, like, a seriously, seriously good at this point, obviously he had a super bad crash in January 2018, he, like, broke his back, um, and, you know, he, obviously he's still a top, top rider, but it's going to take him some time to get back to the best condition if he ever can. Um, hopefully he can. But you can see the gaps here. Bora Man's in, in no man's land. But this five out front is really starting to get a gap on these narrow roads. If someone decides not to chase, it's quite hard to sort of get around them sometimes. It's all single file, but the motivation isn't really there. At the moment, it's not too bad. But also around these corners, like if you're going, you can easily lose half a second if you're not pressing on through each of the corners um, in comparison to the lead group who's obviously chasing old Galapan down now the last climb is it, it's hard but it really is more of a sprinter's climb than a proper climb so you, you know all these guys obviously have similar attributes but Galapan's not super punchy um so for him it'd be best we got, got away solo but with 3k to go it's not really very technical running until till the finale we're now onto a, a big road um I guess there's, there's some hairpins and stuff on it but it's not like um I don't know they're not narrow roads is what I'm trying to say so the group has now basically been formed. This is it. Um, you're either in the group or you're not. Alaphilippe quickly decides that it's time to get to work. He's got Vakoc at the back. Vakoc is going to be resting up. He's last wheel. Um, Galapan's not doing any turn. Alaphilippe goes to the front now. He's like, right, boys, I'm going to make sure this group gets the finale and uh, you fight out the win. So he gets on the front. Obviously, a, a very good descender. And uh, Vakoc just sits in third, uh, fourth wheel uh, and just loving life. Tanner's behind him. Gasparotto ahead of him. And then Wellens, this is... One of the most, I, I do like this hairpin, I use it, obviously the finale is the same every year, but it's sort of one hairpin, then next hairpin. You always get some nice helicopter shots, a bit of church action. Um, so, I, I mean, I said it's not technical, but yeah, it was pretty technical, but it's like not not narrow roads or anything. So, you know, in terms of group size, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, Tanner's just sitting off there a little bit. Um, and Al Philippe is still driving, and this is what I mean, like, Backwatch was seen as seriously good classes, right? I mean, it's like, now, could you imagine Al Philippe sacrificing himself in, like, a spring class like this? Like, no way he ever would do that. Um, but, you know, at, at the time, Backwatch was a, was a super, super puncher. I think he won a stage of the Tour of Britain the year before this. Good old Rob Hatch told me that, and I was listening to commentary before, so, you know, that's uh, it's not the best race in the world, but it's a 2.HC or 2.Pro, as they're called now, so it's not not terrible. But Al Philippe's drilling, no one even takes a turn, it's just the Al Philippe like and this is the thing i think sometimes like if you if you've got someone who's just willing to ruin themselves even if the group behind is like 30 riders they're just all messing around like look at them no one's pulling a turn everyone's just cruising around that's stebo in the bottom right i don't think it is but it's, it's some sort of dimension dead end. and also a quick step up two guys who will probably just sit there and just like if anyone's hesitant i'll just go to the front um so the last climb is about yeah as i said about one kilometer 
maybe a little bit more. So about a turn onto it. Ala Philippe knows all he has to do is just deliver these boys to the bottom. Back has been looking strong all day. He's been resting up. Um, obviously, Gasparotto is always a bit of a bit of a worry, but Galapan has already done an effort, and David Tanner, I don't think they weren't too worried about because obviously he had attacked before and they managed to get across to him relatively quickly. Um, so here we go onto the right hand corner onto the Iskia and then they turn right again and there's a left hand and that's basically it. And you can see here the difference in the group, like that's all set up the group we're watching now. No way they're ever going to get them back. Um, so, you know, in some ways that would, it's quite good. If you were um, a sprinter, you'd be playing on this, you'd be trying to get people to do, you know, you'd just be sitting on be like, now we've got it. Um, but actually they've got Alaphilippe just to launch it. So here's one kilometre to go, Flam Rouge, as you can see. Uh, getting onto some, most of the climb, um, I believe, is not cobbles. Um, there's a bit of cold bit to begin with. I think they turn onto the asphalt here. And Vakoch decides it's time to go as soon as Alaphilippe swings off, which is around this corner. Um, and he's in the perfect position because all these guys are behind Alaphilippe. And he just launches and cheerio, lads. Like, cheerio to David Tanner straight away. And he's, he's going across the road trying to get rid of everyone's draft. And at this point, you think, oh, he could almost get there. Like, Galapan's looking really good. But then he just seems to keep going and he looks around and he's like, nah, we're going again. And that psychologically ruins people because you're like on the limit doing, you know, five, six hundred watts. And then he just looks around and he's like, nah, I'll surge up a little bit and keeps the gap. And again, at this point, like he, you can see how much he's digging over the top of this climb, which is super, super strong. Um, and obviously Gaspard is trying to get on terms as well, but there's just no one strong. He's a big lad as well. Like he doesn't like on a bike. He, he looks huge. Like he doesn't look like he's a, a typical rider compared to the guys behind who are tiny and quite slight. He looks super powerful and strong on a bike, um, but yeah, he was, he was an absolute man. Like, there was no way he wasn't winning this race, um, and you might say, you know, it's not the biggest race in the world, but in my opinion, it's it's bigger than a lot of, well, a lot of what some World Tour races, and I mean, in terms of spring classics, it's it's one of the biggest ones, um, you know, it's on the tier below, maybe it's, you know, it's definitely not like the same level as Flanders or anything, but similar level to Harrowbacker and those ones, because I mean, it, it's pretty, you know, it bridges the gap between uh sort of well i guess the parry bay you have parry bay and then you have this and then you have out on the weekend so a lot of people do it as a bit of a warm-up uh and it's got you know really good parkour if I, I would recommend watching the whole thing they've got some good laps going on there but yeah backwatch gets the win it's a shame the man's not going to be racing this year or anyone will be um but yeah i hope you enjoy this video pit backwatch absolute legend and i reckon he's gonna do um hopefully he can get back to the same level he'll, he'll definitely get some results for sure but i'm not sure if he will obviously he had a pretty bad crash and here they're Remnants of the bunch. I believe that's it. That's like a 50 year old Rebelline winning. Oh no, it's not. It's Matthews and Cocka. And I, yeah, Rebelline might have got third in that bunch sprint, to be fair. Um, but anyway, see you in the next one. Um, if you've got any thoughts about what videos you want me to do, let me know. Training, racing, race analysis, tech reviews, anything I'm happy to be honest. I've got time these days. Um, so yeah, I've got time to make some nice, nice quality content for the viewers. But here we go. Big, big sprint, 30k an hour, he's going more than 30 up there, he's absolutely flying, son. And the gap he puts into him, into both of them, is just, it's not huge to begin with, but then he just keeps going. He just doesn't stop, and there the man is, he's away, and as soon as he does that little look back, realizes he's got a gap, he goes again. And that is Cheerio to old Galapan and Gasparotto. So anyway, cheers, cheers for watching this video, and uh, see you in the next one, eh?